I've owned a Tesla Model 3 for four years now, and instead of going over everything I like about the car, I thought it'd be more interesting to actually go over the things I don't like about the car after four years of ownership. And the first downside I found with the Model 3 is oddly enough, the software updates. While Tesla in general is way ahead of the competition with their consistent software updates, sometimes the updates can actually make things worse. Take the latest UI, for example, that came out in December 2021. Tesla made it harder to turn on the seat heaters by removing the two front seat heater icons from the main screen. They also removed the swipe card system for quickly checking tire pressure, which is now hidden behind a menu, and the navigation map's dark theme decreased the contrast between the map background and the secondary roads color, making them harder to see. Though at the time of recording, Tesla seems to have fixed this issue. Now related to software updates, Tesla is lagging behind its competition in one other key area related to software, and that's support for CarPlay and Android Auto, which mirror the apps on your phone and allow you to access a simplified version of certain apps on your car's screen, which is pretty useful in particular for music streaming and podcast apps. Now this would not be as big of a deal if Tesla's software had more apps on it, but at the time of this recording, here in the US at least, for music streaming services, you can only get Spotify. Spotify, Tidal, and TuneIn. So if you want to stream music from another streaming service or your favorite podcast app like Apple Podcasts or Pocket Casts, you're out of luck and you'll have to do that through your phone and stream the audio to your Tesla over Bluetooth, which is not as integrated as CarPlay or Android Auto solution. Now for some people, the lack of support for these software platforms from Apple and Google, that's a deal breaker. And that's where I'm really curious to see what you think. Is not having Android Auto and CarPlay a deal breaker for you and holding you back from purchasing a Tesla? And if you're already a Tesla owner and you're familiar with Android Auto and CarPlay, what do you think? Do you miss not having that in your Tesla? Let me know in the comments below. And while you're down there, make sure you hit that thumbs up button if you like this video and subscribe to the channel to see more long-term review videos like this one. Moving on, next let's talk about the next downside, which is the trunk, specifically when you open it in a rainstorm. For whatever reason, a lot of the rain will just kind of slide down that back glass and just kind of hop over the little lip and then land directly into your trunk. Another thing that's been annoying with my Model 3 that Tesla did fix in later versions of the Model 3 are the door buttons. It throws passengers who aren't familiar with Teslas and they often try to grab the emergency door release instead if they're sitting in the front, which isn't great. Also in the winter time, and this is true for all electric cars, not just Teslas, your range can be significantly reduced. And the reason for that is with an electric car, when the battery is really cold, it limits how much power you can put back into the battery through regenerative braking, thus reducing your overall range. And if your Tesla is equipped with a heater and not a heat pump like my version is, that can also zap your range as well. So you want the car and battery to be as warm as possible before heading out so you won't have reduced regen. The only problem with that is typically it'll take me a good 30 to 45 minutes to warm up the car enough to the point where I have full regen. Often I'll forget to do that and then I'll lose out on range. Now Tesla does have a scheduling feature that allows you to schedule the car to warm up every day so it's ready to go at a specific time, which is great, especially for those who have a pretty regular schedule and they leave their home at the same time every morning. Now, before we move on, if you like Tesla and you like investing, if you've ever wanted to invest in a particular piece of art or you've been curious about the art market in general, you should check out Masterworks who kindly sponsored this video. With over 75 years of art buying experience, Masterworks allows you to invest in the same artwork billionaires do, like those by the name of Banksy, Monet, and other iconic artists. And contemporary artwork prices have outpaced the S&P 500 total return by 100 164% from 1995 to 2021. Getting started is easy. You just go over to their website, create an account, browse their artwork, and diversify your portfolio. Masterworks also offers a secondary market on their website where you can sell your shares to another member, just like how you can sell stock on an app like Robinhood. You can gain priority access by clicking the link in the description below and start diversifying your portfolio today by investing in blue chip art with Masterworks. 
Another part of the Tesla Model 3 driving experience I haven't enjoyed is phantom braking while using autopilot, full self-driving, or just traffic-aware cruise control. And apparently this behavior actually increased last year during the time when I experienced it and coincided with Tesla disabling the forward radar in cars with the full self-driving beta, which mine at the time was enrolled in. Now, after I had a few run-ins with this behavior, I quickly unenrolled my Model 3 from the full self-driving beta, and ever since I did that, I haven't run into this behavior again, which is good, but man, when it happens, it's scary and it makes you want to use autopilot way less. The other thing it also makes me long for is just regular cruise control. With Teslas, you get traffic aware cruise control or nothing. There is no just standard cruise control like you may be used to from prior vehicles. And Tesla's been putting traffic aware cruise control in their cars since 2015, although weirdly, they started classifying this feature as a beta feature in 2018, which doesn't exactly instill a ton of confidence in this feature given most other car manufacturers now also have traffic aware cruise control available on some models, and they certainly do not classify it as a beta feature. And this situation has become serious enough for the National Highway and Transportation Safety Administration, otherwise known as NHTSA here in the US, to open an investigation into Tesla over the issue. And if you're buying a Tesla today, here in North America at least, your car will not be equipped with a front-facing radar. Tesla has now removed them from all production cars here in North America in pursuit of Elon Musk's strategy to solely rely on a single type of sensor for autopilot and autonomous driving, known as Tesla Vision, which is made up of several cameras around the car. Which I think is interesting to point out pretty much goes against what everybody else in the autonomous driving industry is doing right now. So either Elon is right and knows what he's doing and the rest of all these industry players are wrong. And at this point, again, I don't know if I'd bet against Elon Musk at this point. The guy seems to be more right than he is wrong, typically. Then again, like Jeff Bezos, Steve Jobs, a lot of visionary tech founders, they all make mistakes. Elon Musk has made many mistakes as CEO of Tesla. You may not remember, but the Model 3 production ramp was absolutely chaotic. Part of the reason for that was Musk's strategy to over-automate his production lines too quickly, which completely caused chaos for the Model 3's production ramp and caused Tesla to miss their projections. So hopefully Tesla will figure this one out and soon. Not having reliable or just standard non-adaptive cruise control is just inexcusable in 2022. So those are all of the downsides I found after using my Model 3 for four years. Now, do I see myself driving another car, trading in my Model 3? Absolutely not. Like I do not see myself driving anything but a Tesla at this point in time. The car's performance is incredible. Maintenance has been very low over the past four years. I've had to replace two dented rims after I ran over a really bad pothole. I've had to replace one of the tires after a tire blowout on the highway. And then I replaced the cabin air filters and the windshield wipers around every 12 to 18 months. I never have to go to a gas station. The Tesla supercharger network still gives you a huge advantage over other electric vehicles, especially here in the US. The car gets awesome new features over time like sentry mode and dash cam, which are among my favorites. So yeah, I still love this car even with its downsides. It's a work of art and I wouldn't trade it for anything else. Now, if you're looking at getting a Tesla, I've left some links below in the description to some of my favorite Tesla accessories. So make sure you check those out. And if you have any further questions about the Model 3, leave them in a comment below. If you like this video and found it helpful, make sure you hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel to see more videos like this one. For Six Months Later, I'm Josh Tedder. Thanks for watching.